Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I've got this 4 ampere red lithium ion Milwaukee battery. I don't know if you can see that, but it's showing one flashing light. And if I put it in the voltmeter, it's showing 14.52 volts there. So if that battery was correct and in good working order, it shouldn't be flashing light for one thing, but also it should be between the range of 17.5 and 20 volts. So that's too low. So this battery effectively is too low to power a tool and it's too low for the charger to recognize it. So all we can do now is get it open and check the individual cell voltage. Right, with the four screws out now the top should just pop off and should be able to pull that out of the casing fairly easily. Right, so here we are out of the case one flashing red light as we've observed. So what we'll do is we're going to check the voltage of all individual cells. And to do this, you go from one side to the other. 3.58, that's good. 3.58. 3.58. You'll see a minus, a minus value in that. That's because uh, I was on the wrong side there. Don't let that worry you. Just go all the way down. 3.58, 3.58, nice well balanced pack so far, 3.58, 3.58, you see that, 0 0.190, 0.190, and 0 0.190 so effectively these two cells in the bottom have failed and the voltage is too low and that's what's pulling down the overall voltage so these cells have to be replaced and hopefully we can recover this pack we could buy new cells for this um, and they're available it's a 2000 milliamp 18650 cell but that's not what I'm going to do today. I have this old donor DeWalt Flexvolt battery and that has, this one has 10 cells, 10, 2000 milliamp 18650s. This one has 15, but it hasn't 15 now because I've been borrowing out of it for some time now. So I'm going to pull two more out of it. I think there's two good ones left. There's a lot of field cells in this, but there's two good ones left. Here we are, I've pulled two cells from that now. And they're 20 S's, A and R, 18, 6, 15, 20 S's. So they're fairly compatible with this. So what I'm going to do is remove these and put these two in and see if we have a fixed battery. But before we dive in and do that, we should probably do a voltage test on these just to see how they are. Hold on. 3 point, let me see you get your empty shot here. 3.35 and 3.39 so not far away. A little bit low you can bring these up with the little little chargers and even my bigger charger will bring them up it takes a bit of time it is worth doing if you want to do a good job but for the sake of this video I'm going to just crack on put them on it means that if the cells are a little bit low in this these two will not achieve full full voltage but near enough for the job you know Always be careful when you're working with batteries, um, wear gloves, be careful when disconnecting them the way I'm doing, not to cross connect or you just have to be very very careful. You could cut these out with a Dremel or something but that's, that's risky too. Just generally working with batteries is risky and should be taken very seriously. Probably shouldn't even be doing this inside.
they're not easily pushed out, but I got there anyway with a bit of aggression. And now we have to put these in. Yeah, so these go in this way. I see some people soldering cells, soldering Monte nickel strip, but I don't like that. The specific reason is you can get a cross correction and that's very dangerous. The safer way is what I do here, using the little spot welder. And I use very fine nickel strip so it won't, uh, in the case of an overload it'll burn out. Right, that's all been spot welded together now. That's all the complete pack. So the next thing to do is test the voltage. And we're getting 17.72. We can put it together and try it in the charger. Maybe I'll do that. It's shown as fully charged, so that's not right. So I think we've got more to do here. And a red flashing light. Nope. The only option we got left is to open it up again and fit this new circuit board. And then we will have a fixed battery. Next thing to do is prep the board, so I'm going to put these nickel strips onto the board, solder them on. I've trimmed them to suit, so I'll do that now. That's the board prepped now with the nickel strips. I used this Milwaukee M12 solder iron, M12SA. If you want to, if you want to have a look at this on Amazon, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. Very good. I wouldn't be without it now. One of my favourite things. I'll leave this to one side for now. Just leave that aside. And what I have to do is get the old board off. The easiest way is to cut the existing nickel strips off and pry off the positive and negative ends here. These ends. And to get these two screws of course. These screws are a T8. Just two of them there. Yep. Oh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. What we really want to do is cut off the straps and get the get the uh, get this cut off. Get this board removed. Oh, sparky, sparky, no good. But we'll get there. Oh, need this thing disconnected.
that's the board off now. Now it's time to fit the new one. Yeah. Yes, very nice. Right, that's all the spot welding completed. See the positive and negative and all the, the cell balancers are all connected. And I'm showing two bars so that bodes well for the fix. So all we've got to do now is throw it into the box and see if the fix actually worked. and it's charging it's charging well so we'll leave that away and see how the chart how it does that's only been a few minutes and it's already up to three bars so i'll check the voltage of it now but the voltage up to over 18 volts 18.22 and it was still charging so we're pretty happy with that now we'll try it in the tool just to see if it works it should do at 18 volts yeah that's pretty good so that's been a complete success that fix so if you um, like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my other videos. Also, I'm going to put a link in the description and probably a pinned comment of these. This we said I have this multimeter and the soldering iron as well, if you want to check them out.